Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to 10 plants that I think are kind of overhyped. Just gonna say it. After I did the 10 plants with stable variegation video, a lot of you guys asked me for this video, so here it is. I want you to know though that everything I say in this video is either based from my opinion or my experience, so this is going to be very subjective, as the title may suggest. And I have to say that I do not wish anybody any offense if they would like to own any of the plants on this list. One last thing I'd like to mention before we start, if I talk about prices, please bear in mind that this is so subjective due to where I am and the time of year, the pandemic, everything. For example, I'm filming this video in December in the UK. It is off season right now for plants, at least for us, and we're in the middle of a pandemic and Brexit hasn't quite happened yet. So there is a lot at play here. So when I say something is, you know, in the treble digit range, this is kind of a snapshot of how things are at the moment. It might be kind of cool to look back at this in a year or two though and see what's changed. That could be really interesting. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. The first plant on my list today is none other than the Philodendron Paraiso Verde. Now, I tried really hard to like this plant. I promise you, I really did. I think I even hauled it at some point last year, but I just hated it. I think it's mainly for me, there's a couple of reasons, but the main reason that really sticks out to me is why I just do not like this plant is the growth habit. We'll call it the growth habit. So the best way I can describe it is kind of like the petiole to leaf ratio. Like the petioles on this plant are really, really long and the leaves just aren't quite enough to balance it out. So it always looks a bit leggy. Not only that, but the leaves of the plant itself, they're not really structured. They're kind of wavy and floppy. And because of the long petioles, when you've got this plant kind of sat there, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look proud. To me, it looks really leggy. The other thing that I don't love about this plant, to be honest, is the variegation. Now then, I do kind of like the Syngonium Mojito. That's quite nice. I don't love it though, but that has the same variegation as this one. But this plant, honestly, I don't get it. This plant goes for quite a bit of money. I think it's in the low three-digit range. I honestly think if you want a plant that looks cool like this, either go for a Philodendron Jose Bono, because they're really, really nice plants, or go for a Philodendron Bilitae. And to be honest, a lot of the time, they are cheaper than the Paraiso Verde. So for me, it's kind of a no-brainer. The second plant featuring on my list for 10 plants that I think are pretty overhyped is the Philodendron Caramel Marble. Now then, just wait, because I actually think that this plant is stunning. I really do. I love it. It's beautiful. I would love to own one. But the price. Can I just talk about the price for a second? Because I spoke to a friend that traded in plants that used to sell these maybe about two or three years ago, and they were able to buy them in at $15 each, and nobody wanted them. Like, they were hard to sell. No one cared. No one wanted them. Now, you can get these plants for, I think, low four figures, something like that. It's kind of weird, really, because I would have assumed that this plant might have inflated towards the cost of a philodendron ring of fire, which is probably in the low treble digit range, I believe. So it's really interesting to see that the caramel kind of took off and went crazy, but the ring of fire kind of didn't. Obviously, they look different, but it's just a bit nuts. Like, I love the plant. I want the plant. Sure, it's a wishlist plant, but but if you think for one second that I'm spending that amount of money on one, no. I don't even know how this has happened. I don't know how this came to be. I don't know if the internet just woke up one day and went, yes, I'll have that one, please. That's like the new thing. I don't really know. I'm feeling it, but I'm not feeling the price. And that is an insane price tag compared to what they used to be. So one other thing before we move on, I have been told that these plants don't grow amazingly and they're a little bit prone to reversion. So if you're looking for one and you want to spend that level of money, maybe that's something you need to consider. The next plant on my list that I think is just totally overrated is none other than the Philodendron Strawberry Shake. Now then, when this plant is mature, it looks brilliant. I have no complaints. I think it looks fantastic. It's really unique. It's got a really unique color of variegation. It's got a lot of pink to it. Hence the name Strawberry Shake. I get it. Cool. Awesome. But when this plant is juvenile, I know a lot of you are going to agree with me. This looks It does not look good. It really doesn't. It looks really bad, actually. It doesn't grow anything like it does when it's mature. The leaves are really long and leggy. So when these things are juvenile, they get these really crappy, long, thin leaves, and it just looks terrible. I wouldn't want to buy a juvenile one, which I totally get is how you get these plants in, right? You're doing it via cuttings, but they just always look a bit 
eh. Like, I don't feel that the growth habit is a really nice one. Same for the pink princess in some scenarios, but particularly with the philodendron strawberry shake. Whenever I see a young plant, it always just looks like it needs 10 times the amount of light. Not only that, but I think if you don't give this plant enough light, so you need kind of more than what you would normally give a philodendron, if you don't give it enough, it's hard to explain. The variegation turns into like a dirty, just like a dirty yellow color. Like, it's not vibrant. It's going to look a bit crap. You really need to get it under a grow light or in a window or something else to get that really nice strawberry shake color, I suppose. So beautiful plant, not knocking it, but the majority of plants I see are juvenile. I have some in the shop as well and they're juvenile and they just look awful, awful, awful. So I think for a long-term project, great. If you're growing it over pollen, you've got time. It's not a problem. Go for the plant. Awesome. But short term, it just looks like you just didn't care for it in my opinion. That's the best way I can put it. Another issue I have about these plants as well, and a lot of them on this list, the price tag does come into it. But I think at the moment you can get a juvenile strawberry shake for in the low to mid three digit range. I think they've always been worth a little bit of money, but it's again with the current situation, it's kind of boomed. But regardless of the price, it just doesn't look good until it's mature and until it's in bright light. So if you can handle all that, go for it. But for me, nah. The next plant that I think is kind of totally, definitely overrated is the variegated Adansonii. Yeah, I know. And I, I, full disclosure, I own one of these, but I just think it's become a bit of a weed. Now, obviously this depends on the country you're in and everything else. But when I see these things on Facebook, specifically in the EU right now, you literally, you can't go a day on a Facebook group without seeing one of these for sale or for trade or best offer or anything. You literally can't. It's not doable. That's okay and all, but the price is still sky high. And I'm like, at what point is the price going to come down a little bit? Because I do think this plant is going to be maybe with it, certainly within the next year, it's going to shift down to the, the high three digit range quite easily. Um, they are selling at the minute for the low four digits and they seem to be kind of stable. But to be quite honest, there's so many of them around. I actually think it's going to tank the value a little bit because I think a long time ago, variegated and Sony I were a lot more unicorn status than what they are now. But I feel like there's just too many. The market is really getting quite saturated with them, I would say. I'd be curious to see what you think in the comments as well, because for me, they're just everywhere. So the next plant on my list, it's not really a specific plant. I mean, I'm going to give you a couple of examples to show you what I'm talking about, but it, it's kind of a, a subset of plants or a kind of sport of plant. I don't really know what you call this. A lot of the time it's bullshit, in my opinion. But the next kind of plant on my list that I think is so overhyped is essentially anything mint. That might be a very unpopular opinion, I totally get that. But in this case, anyway, when I'm talking about mint, I'm talking about, for example, mint Monstera Deliciosa, mint Monstera Adansonii, or maybe even a Florida Ghost mint. Now I'm going to break these down one by one in a little bit more detail, just because I have different things to say on each. Not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, people label plants with the word mint to get more money. I don't know when this fashionable mint thing kicked off, but a lot of the time, not all the time, it is to get more money for a plant by calling it mint, because for some reason that's worth more than variegation. For me, it's just like you're getting half the variegation because you haven't gone full albo, right? It's somewhere in the middle. And I get it from a collector's perspective, of course, but the price tag is just, it's just insane at the minute. It really is. I think it's in the low four digit range for these plants. Um, maybe to be honest, it's in the more of a higher four digit range in some cases. It kind of depends on where you are. I know they're a big thing in America as well. So mm, I don't love it. Not only that, but but, and again, not every plant, but a lot of the plants I see being sold as mint online have maybe two leaves on the plant that you could classify as mint. And the next one, the newest one, seems to be coming in like a normal album. So the mint isn't there anymore. Now, all that says to me personally is that that's not super stable. So for me, I wouldn't want to spend that amount of money on something that I didn't know was stable or not, right? You need, you need a little bit more than that. So if these things become more stable and the price drops a bit for me, yes, totally worth it. I love all things mint. You know, in real life, I love the color mint. So great. But at this price, no, I don't think so. For the Adansonii mint, for me, brutally honestly, every time I see a picture of one of these plants, they don't look well to me. They look like they've got some kind of issue. 
I know a lot of people share that opinion at the moment as well, that the planet doesn't look very healthy. And I know there is definitely some debate at the moment between people online as to whether this is actually simply a virus. When I look at photographs of these plants, more often than not, the leaf shape appears quite distorted to me on photographs, which to be honest, is a huge red flag that shouldn't really happen. I would not personally take the risk on this plant because it's in the low four digit range at the minute. I wouldn't take that risk because there is no proof that it's not viral. So maybe further down the line, if it was proved to not be viral, then maybe that would be different. But even then I think the price would have to drop because I don't personally think that it's a very attractive plant. Of course, if you want to buy one of these plants or you own one of these plants, great, awesome. I'm not saying go and get them. I'm saying be careful because if you buy one of these plants in at the low four digit range and it turns out at a later date that it has a virus, your plant's not worth anything anymore. That's something you've really got to consider if you want to buy them. The last example I'm going to give in this kind of subsection is the Florida Ghost Mint, the Philodendron Florida Ghost Mint. Now then, this is not a thing. I'm not saying it's a scam, but I'm saying it's terminology used by people to sell plants at higher prices. So for example, if you were to buy a Florida Ghost and a Florida Ghost Mint, they are the same plant. I did a video on this a little while back that I will link below for you, but I did a video on the different conditions and how that would affect the color of the leaves in the Florida Ghost Mint. So if you're interested in that, I will link that down below. But to cut a long story very short, they're pretty much light dependent. So if you have a Florida Ghost Mint and you shove that thing under a grow light or in a window, I'm telling you now, you will get much brighter leaves. And I know that since I did that video on the Florida Ghost, a lot of people have confirmed that as well. A lot of people have stuck their their mints under grow lights or in a window or wherever in bright light and the leaves have come out white. Do not pay more money for a mint. If you want to buy a Florida Ghost Mint, cool, do it, fine. But do not pay more money for it because it is exactly the same as a ghost. And this whole thing does kind of boil into why I don't like the whole mint thing. Not enough is known. It's a bit of a gray area really for a lot of the reasons that I've mentioned across different plants. So, so for me, mint, Nah. So coming in at number six on my list is the Syngonium Strawberry Ice. It's just a bit ugly. I'm sorry, it's just a bit ugly. I don't know how familiar you are with Syngonium generally, but there are so many beautiful colors and varieties about them. Yes, I know, I'm gonna do a rep on the next, just give me a little bit more time. You will find all of that out, but Take my word for it if you don't know. There are so many beautiful varieties of Syngonium. This one that I'm showing you right here is hailed as being quite rare, quite sought after. For me, it's a bit gross. These can sell definitely in the low three digit range, but sometimes it can push more towards the mid three digit range. And honestly, I don't get why. I don't think it's pretty. It's kind of pink, it's kind of burgundy, it's kind of green. It just doesn't look very nice. And I don't actually get why a lot of people really want this plant. I don't know if this is literally just a situation where people want it because it is hard to get and it is sought after. So if you have an opinion on this plant here, I would love to hear in the comments below. I will have tried to find the most flattering picture that I could. So please trust that this is done in good faith. I'm not like throwing shade at the plant. I've tried to find a really good picture of the plant. But for me, they're just eh. Next on the list, we have the Anthurium Ace of Spades. Now, again, this is a plant where I do appreciate how it looks. I think it's very sexy. Love it, not disputing it. But the price, when did this happen? I've been quite busy this year, so I haven't really followed like trends on prices of like every plant. I mean, who does anyway? But the price of this plant is insane. I think I saw one for like the late treble digits on sale. And I was just like, w when did this happen? Because I don't know if anybody knows this. So mini story time. This plant as little as two years ago was actually being TC'd. So it was under TC production and batches were coming out in obviously large amounts. That's how tissue culture works. But nobody wanted them. Literally nobody wanted them and they actually ended up getting dropped from TC. So I bet they're kicking themselves now. And this is just one of these examples where a trend in a plant can change so much. That's what kind of fascinates me about this whole market. Things can literally change so fast. And I think the Anthurium Ace of Spades is a really good example of that. Because although it was sexy, although it was great, no one wanted it. And now it's like gold dust and it's really hard to find. And if you find it, expect to pay for it big time. I do think, given how ridiculously sought after it is right now, I do think that is short-lived and that is 
quite honestly, because the labs that were making these plants still have the protocol that they've obviously fine tuned in for that plant, right? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video all about tissue culture. I will link that down below if what I'm saying is just lost on you. But what I'm basically saying is these labs that produce these plants have perfected the methodology of producing this specific plant. And they will just have it sat there. When these labs see that this plant is worth this much money, they're immediately going to start TCing the plant again. Wild guess that probably already started if they're aware of this information. And eventually we will see batches of those come out and the value will just plummet. So if you want one of these plants, think about waiting. Honestly, think about waiting. I would not spend mid treble digits or anything like that. Maybe low treble digits I would spend just because I predict that the value is going to come down. So it's overhyped for me. I get it on appearance. But given what I know about TC and the way that this plant was produced by TC, I wouldn't, I would wait, I would honestly wait. And for that reason, at the moment, I think it's overhyped because nobody wanted it before. Coming in at number eight on my list, we have the Philodendron Black Cardinal Variegata. So a variegated black cardinal. Now then, now then. This plant should be good in theory, but to me, it's just not. And I can kind of outline the reasons why. It's not the growth pattern. It is the appearance, but it's mainly the variegation. If you Google pictures of this plant right now, if you stop what you're doing and you Google it or you Google it on your phone while you're watching this video, you will see probably that there aren't very many great pictures of the variegation on this plant. Now for me, I think the variegation, this is similar to what I said about the philodendron strawberry shake. I feel like the variegation just looks a little bit kind of dirty. I would almost say it's like dishwater variegation. I'm not saying that it's not beautiful to somebody else, but this is a video about my opinions. And I think it's a bit ugly. I don't like that plant. I've never liked that plant. They do go for quite a lot of money though. I'm pretty sure they're in the low treble digit range. I haven't seen any sold for a long time, so perhaps they've gone up in value, but I just never see a sexy one. I honestly don't. I never see a sexy one. I do not like how the variegation presents itself. I just don't. If you have a different opinion on this, of course, I would love to hear it. I'd be really interested to see what you think about that. Maybe you might agree with me on the whole dishwater variegation thing. I don't really know. But for me, it's not great. I don't know how available it is when I say that I think this plant is in the low treble digit range. I am guessing I don't see them for sale anymore. Don't know. Don't know how rare they are right now. This next plant is going to be such an unpopular opinion that I can kind of feel it. But the next plant on my list that I just think is so ridiculously overrated, it has to be the Raphidophora tetrasperma variegata. It just has to be, guys. Have you seen the price of these things? Have you seen them? Have you seen them? Have you seen them? Because honestly, they will either go for the low four digit range or close to 10,000. I'm not kidding. It's absolutely crazy how much these things will go for. Why pay that much for that amount of variegation? I don't get it. I'm not saying they're not pretty plants. They're kind of nice, but for me, there are so many other plants that are variegated that you could probably get away with. I prefer a Monstera Albo. And I'm only saying it because for me, the Albo is just tougher. It grows better. It propagates better because Raphidophora aren't the best things to propagate in my experience anyway. Certainly not to ship. They ship absolutely terribly. I just think a Monstera Albo is better. Even, not even that. Epipremnum Panatum Variegata is a really nice one as well. Now, obviously, because it's variegated, it should have a value. I'm not disputing that. But not this value. This is a little bit insane to me. You can pick up Eel Manii for less. Nothing warrants that price tag except perhaps... I mean, I don't even know what plant warrants that price tag, actually. Certainly not that plant, for me personally, anyway. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait till they get more popular, because they will. Because if they are in TC, I tell you now, variegates will be produced in TC, because it happens. It literally happens. I'm not saying it's going to be overnight. I'm just saying it's going to happen because this plant is tissue cultured. That is highly likely as to why we see variegates kind of popping up at the minute. It's because this plant has been TC'd, so you can expect to see something pop up. For me, at like 10 10,000? No, categorically not. I can think of way better plans to spend my money on that I don't have to worry about, to be honest. The last plant on my list today that I have for you, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And that is the Philodendron Cream Splash. So it's a beautiful trailing heart-shaped plant with, I believe, cream in it. So a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. 
it's creamy. I don't know. If you absolutely love the philodendron Brazil, for example, and you just think that's hot, I totally get why you'd want this plant. I do think it's a little bit more attractive than the philodendron Brazil. Personally, I'm not crazy about that plant. I used to have one. I actually sold it off a long time ago in favor of my just all green philodendron instead. But for me, for the price increase to get one of these, I'm not loving it. Maybe I'm totally wrong on the price. I'm not sure what the price is. I've seen them in high double digits for a small cutting. But is it is it that much different? Is it that much different? It's not. For me, it's just not different enough from the Brazil to justify wanting it. If I came across it in a garden center, there was a full plant of it, it was a good price, then maybe, yeah, maybe it would look really nice in here. But I'm certainly not getting the hype around it because although it's not super expensive, like a lot of the plants on this list are, there's just a lot of hype around it. And I, d I don't know how this happened. I don't know how this happened at all. I haven't done any reading into it because I do think it's overhyped. I don't particularly care to read up on it. So let me know down below if you know kind of what the scoop is on this plant because I don't get it. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. But eh. Just eh. And that concludes this list of 10 plants that I honestly think are just overhyped to different degrees and for different reasons. Now, if you agree with me or you don't agree with me, I would love to hear your comments down below. I think that'd be really interesting. Similarly, if you have a couple of plants, it doesn't have to be 10 plants, but if you have like five plants, one plant that you think is overhyped, whether you own it or not, perhaps you bought it and now you're just like, oh, why did I do that? Because I would love to do a video on that, by the way. Kind of like plants I regret buying in. If you want to see that video, tell me down below and I will do that. But I'd be really curious to see what you think is overhyped because obviously I have my own opinion, but I'm also working in that market. So I might think slightly differently about certain plants to what you guys would. I would love to hear your opinion on what you think is potentially way overhyped. If you like this video, please leave a like. It really, really helps me. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And if you'd like to see any more of my content and you're not already subscribed, then please hit that subscribe button. I would absolutely love to have you. If you have any video requests that you'd like to see me do, then please leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.